Hello, everybody. It is I, the Luigi Big Mac, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time, uh, our mentor, Mia Fey, has bit the bullet by getting, uh, by getting, uh, smashed in the head by the thinker. Who knew that thing would come back twice? Uh, and we did some detective work, even though we're a lawyer, because, uh, because this, because this world's fucked up. And, and finally, we're defending Mia's sister, Maya, who's completely innocent of this case. 100%. Ah, jeez. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at was at the scene of the crime. Prosecution has evidence she made, she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. Prosecution see no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor, the prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gum Chu. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides, of homicides down at precinct, sir. Detective, Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map to, of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the, and the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by blood objects, sire. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sire. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sire. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Four, four, four plants added to the court record. Now, detective. Y yes sir! You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, of, scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sire. I had hard evidence she did it, sire. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe. Please, te please te testify to the court about this hard evidence. Maya Fay's arrest. As soon as the phone call came, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I mean, rest, rest in Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account. We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the mo very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross examination. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Cross examine what? Couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Hey, Mike just threw something at me. What's this? Where my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness te testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It works a lot of, lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected mine would knew some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something to matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Alrighty. You're on, gum Gumshoe. Anyway, as soon as the phone call came in, ru I rushed to the scene. Who did you say got? Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, hey, pal! Don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across the, from the crime scene. Hmm. Okay, press. Not sure it did much though. Right. Please continue. There are two people there already. Uh, we can skip that one. Defendant Miss Maya Fay and the lawyer Mr. Phoenix Wright. We can probably skip that one. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why is that? What, what's your reason? Why? We had a witness account describing her. Oh, just one second. Uh, yeah, if I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence. She did it, correct? Huh? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What what what? Miss Bray isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't Pink, pal. 
Well, well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than the uh, other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm. I guess pressing can't have its advantages. Yes. Gah. S sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony. Your Honor, sorry. You're something I should have told you about. About first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Er, very well, Detective. Let's hear your hear your testimony again. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Ma On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that that blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's fingers. Before she died, the victim broke the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I I have a question for you, Detective. Your Your Honor, why didn't Why didn't you testify about this final piece of evidence the first time? Ah, uh, eh, I know. I'm I'm real I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it. Your Your Honor, sorry. Try to be more careful. Also, I should probably uh go and do not disturb for Discord. Try to be. And try to be more careful. Well, defense may begin its cross examination. After securing the suspect, after securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. Uh, I think I found a memo written on the piece of paper next to the victim's body. Underwear my was written clearly in blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Let's see. This is where a contradiction is because of the autopsy. Because death was instantaneous. De Detective Gumshoe. There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You said that the victim, BFA, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant Maya Fay. That's really what you're saying? What? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks, now, is it? Isn't it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You you had it. You have it backwards, detective. But backwards. The victim is the only one who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from from a blunt object. She died immediately. But no butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order, order. The defendant has a point. Son who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain the autopsy report? What when? The day the day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The, pro the, the prosecution's point being... The autopsy report is out... Come on! Really? Outdated bullshit! What? what? A, second, a second autopsy was performed yesterday, at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there's a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see! Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you had something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? The, de the detective's a sham! Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham! How could you give me a faulty report? Huh? I, I thought... Detective Gumshoe... I'm disappointed in you, handing him the wrong report like that. I, I'm sorry, sire. You're at fault. You, you are at fault, Detective. This isn't going to look on good on your evaluation next month. What? What? But, but, uh. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. 
Uh, under sword, the court accepts this evidence. Okay. May have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests that the victim was identifying in the killer. I suppose that's, a, that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this, is, this isn't good. The, pro the prosecution would like to call its next witness. The poor, this poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Ms. April May, take, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Witness, your name, please. April May, April May, at your service. Y you can't tell, but I winked. Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton, from what, wanton winking. Aw, yes, your honor. This is, this is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us. Where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel's directly across from Fang Co. Law Offices. Mm, that's right, big, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. It was like nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking was the was the mousy girl sitting on the, in the defense chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she called up to her to her aunt. She, aunt, she hit her. Then the woman with long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Hmm. Well, well, your honor. I see. It's a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see the need to trouble the witness that. Wait, wait, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss May Miss Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding a tiny fault in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. I'll, I'll, gla I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. Hmm. She has she has to have some weakness. Hmm. Very well, you may be begin your cross-examination. Alrighty. It was like 9 o'clock at night. Looked out the window, you know. <sighs> Looks fine to me. And then... Ooh. That's all the... Yeah, the see. Let's see. Uh, I think I'll press her on this one. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know. She uh, had a... Girl, girlish physique. Women know, women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one person at, at the scene of the crime with the short, girlish figure. Your testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. Uh, no. I questioned the testimony. Hold on a minute. That tells me that, that, that testimony stinks. What? what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yeah, yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed the cl my client, Maya Fay, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like that, like this on a daily basis, except for her. And I'm not an expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? 
What? What are you trying to say? You mean liar? I, I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think of the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. Oh, 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 man! Don't do, don't do that. Oh God. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I, di I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw. I did. That clock. That clock. That, that clock. Um, that kind of statuey clock. The finger, I think. Well, does, does the accuracy of my report startle you? I, I see. I only, I only wish that you had been detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. I, I already see, I already see a, uh, I already see a contradiction in her, in her testimony. That clock. How? Oops, shit! Didn't mean to do that. A clock. Wait, didn't this come up? Well, don't look sour. You can't win them all. No. I, I meant, I meant to press. I'm gonna press this one. Objection. Miss May! What you said now, just, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, I like that, wouldn't you? Naughty Mr. Lawyer. You just said this, the statue of the thing girl, uh, thing girl was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh. Er the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You'll withdraw your question. You will withdraw, withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I, all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I caught murderers, murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Ooh, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is that you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? What? That's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it. It says the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fanco? No, 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 hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. The law offices where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Well, Mr. Roy, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. You're at the hotel. There's no way you could have heard a clock go off in the building next door. You have proof she could not? Amateurs, amateurs, listen to me, Mr. Wright. In the courtroom, proof is everything. Without it, you are nothing. You have nothing, you are nothing. Then I would like to propose a test if we should really see what, what she could have heard. The prosecution denies your request. What? What? On what grounds? This is a trivial matter with no direct bearing on the case at hand. Indeed, objection sustained. Damn. Time to switch directions, quick. Ready to proceed, Mr. Wright? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have rung. Your Honor, members of the court... It's inconceivable that the clock in... That the clock... That the clock in question rang... It's empty. The clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly? Just take a look, right now. Oh, see anything interesting, Your Honor? It's as the de defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain the court the meaning of this? It, it is as you can see. The clock was empty, couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. F fat. 
Well, Miss May. Tisk tisk. Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was if if it was after the witness heard the clock, then there was no contradiction. Mm, that's true, that there's a possibility the clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And and that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove that the clock was was, was removed? Oh, possible, of course. I have proof. What? What? Wasn't it? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening, and I I'll and now I'll show you the the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves the clockwork was removed is none other than Maya's own cell phone. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's that's a very cute pho cell phone. Ooh, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it can and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim the, on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? This this wasn't brought to my attention. <laughs> oh, we got you good. We got you good, Edgeworth. We got you good. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Oh, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. Burp. So you just want me to hold on to the finger for you then? If you could. If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor? I think this makes it clear that the clockwork is already gone by the time... This was recorded, which was well before the witness even arrived at our hotel. But, 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 well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know the weapon was a clock? Well, 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 well isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. So the witness has seen, seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defendant have any objections? Yes. The witness claims she's seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. And then, it would be... It would be... It would be the thinker itself. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible. Everything's sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you, you went shopping for a better excuse. Mm. Oh, excuse excuse is not on sale today? Oh, 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 ho, oh, oh. mm. What to do, you porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa! Let's not get ahead of your. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law. The witness will remain calm. Uh, 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 oh, 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 oh! Silly me! Did I um like lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> get scary. Mr. Murray, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Let me explain how how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April, you knew the you you knew the wep weapon was a clock because you heard about it. But witness have never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard. That's correct, Your Honor. And there's no other way she could have. Known the, th there's no other way she could have known the thinker was the clock. And I can show you the proof. Oh, this, whoa, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was the clock. Have a look at this. Ah! Oh, that, that, 
I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you're tapping the victim, Miss Maya Fay's phone, were you not? Oh, oh. Your Your Honor, this is a Your Honor, this is irrelevant. irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that mm, that it is. Objection overruled. It, tro it troubled me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does that does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you're still you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that that was the clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was the clock is. I'm pretty sure it's Maya's phone again. Yep. I presented the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've yes we've seen it. We've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation be between the, the defendant and victim. But yeah, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want to hold. Want you to hold on to me again? What it? What's? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue's a thinker, and it tells you the time. It was April, May. You used a wiretap to listen to the, to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I. I. Objection. Your Honor. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused at you? The defense demands an answer. La, la, ugh. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you, you lawyer. I, it's it's no fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, I'm, I, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh, ah! Uh, that did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal with the final blow. You did it, didn't you? Miss May. What is it, you little shrimp? Talk to me in that tone of voice, will you? You killed her, didn't it? Order. There'll be order. What? How can you possibly say that? Are you mad? All I did was a little wiretapping. Oops. So you admit you tapped her phone. <laughs> but wait. I didn't do anything bad like murder. I'm a good girl. Really? Can you prove it? No way she can prove it. You think... You think you're so smart, Mr. Lawyer, but I can prove it, I, and I will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say. Way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from the sweet bellboy. Room room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know. Like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee. I think I'm make think I'm making this off. Ask the bellboy. There we go. The witness was not on the scene of, at the time of the murder. So where does this leave us? It's my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's te telephone. However, that is a separate crime and with no bearing to the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, my fate, commit the murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away. There's no way I can win unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the de defense have anything to say about her? Um, well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy as a witness. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Wh why? What's your reason? because I hold out that the wiretapping has nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after examining the bellboy, 
then you'll recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, and thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept that the perfect of guilty of Miss Maya Faye. That's my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya would be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Accept the condition. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Um, um, wait. Very well. The court calls to the hotel bellboy to stand. I believe we're ready for the witness te to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, yes, sire. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of, of service. The tree set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin to his testimony. I like how he actually brought the tea set to court. Very good, sir. Yeah, ready then? I'm I'm the head bellboy at the Fine Gate Water Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sire. I brought it to her at, at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. Right, I'm ready, I hope. Uh, this is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved in the murder now, I will be finished. I am the head bellboy at the fine water. Okay, doesn't. That one doesn't seem uh, too suspicious. Time, of course. Precisely 9 o'clock, then. Precisely, exactly. And most definitely, sir, 9 o'clock p.m. How can you be so sure? This man was quite insistent that I, it, it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, did he? I like the iced coffee at exactly 9 o'clock. Something like that. Therefore, I knocked on her door at, at the crack of 9 o'clock, sir. Why would she per so, be so particular at the time? Probably, probably so she can have an eyewitness. And he delivered the ice to to her guest, Miss Maya, uh, Miss May herself. You're sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sire. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come, how come you're so very certain? Well, uh, well, I, when I brought the room service, sir, she, uh, she, the guest, sir, favored me with, um, an embarrasser, sir. Embarrasser, is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sire. But not a French kiss, sire. More of a peek on the cheek. Well, why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was mom momentarily swayed by, the pri by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a it was a moment I shall never for, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing here. Is that it? This is it. Finally, you understand. This bellboy ab has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you end your rather tedious cross examination here. Hmm. It was a bit tedious. The orders may leave to stand. I can't let this. Can I protest? But wait, please, wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? Last question. Let me ask one last question. Objection. Your Honor, I must object. This this charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All, all right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay, this is really it. That's, this is now my last chance. What do I ask him about? Let's, uh, let's go check in. T tell me about check in. Tell me about when you checked in Miss May. Oh, all right. Very well, sire. My first thought was she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl. So it was a really, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. Wait, excuse me. What exactly was the disappointment? Well, I am not the, I am not without charm, sir. But even I had little chance with her lover there. What did he say? What, what did you say? Ah, ooh, or rather quite. Bellboy, 
Tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in? With another person? Object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The winners will answer the question. Er, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, well sire. You were just, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you normally you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who he asked me not to mention if it was he asked me not to mention if it mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sire. Ugh! Yeah, you fool. I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a with a man, correct? Yes, sire. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? Mm, that's right, sire. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned another person involved may, who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's possible that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Would you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright, who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man was Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof! Your Honor, as has been pre... As has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man uh, that was with her. The, bo the bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, 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 what a convenient little setup. Mm, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like... I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of an... Of the other man from this court. Oof! I'm stuck, amateur. These that these accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and def and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <sighs> yes, Your Honor. That's that's all for that's all today for the trial of my my affair. Court is adjourned. September 7th, 2.24 p.m. District Court, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Wright! You're amazing in there! <coughs> Man, doing all these voices hurt my fucking throat. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, like, too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. He sent shivers up my spine, if you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. The lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. I get it. What happens to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. Because she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm gonna find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now, but now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that has been stricken from the record. I don't know how much how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in the detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued. Same progress. And with that, that's going to be the end of today's episode. If you guys enjoyed the content, please please consider subscribing, as I would really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll help and I'll help the channel grow. Uh, leave a like and comment, and I'll uh, to help push this video on YouTube's uh, crappy algorithm. 
With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode where we're going to be doing some more investigation. Until then, see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.